In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and he made the angels, beings of light and fire, who praised and served him. Among them was Abaddon, a mighty angel of great beauty. The story goes that Abaddon was an angel obedient and faithful to God. He always carried out his orders with precision and without hesitation. He was an invincible warrior capable of defeating any enemy. One day, God commanded Abaddon to release the plagues on Egypt to punish Pharaoh for his stubbornness in not letting the people of Israel go. Abaddon obeyed God's command and sent a plague of locusts that decimated the country's crops and livestock. The locusts were hideous creatures with large, scaly bodies, membranous wings, and large, sharp jaws. They moved in huge swarms, devouring everything in their path. Pharaoh, frightened by the plague, called for Moses and asked him to intercede with God to remove it. Moses agreed, but warned Pharaoh that the plague would return if he did not let the people of Israel go. Pharaoh, arrogant as ever, refused to release the people of Israel. Then Abaddon sent a new plague of locusts, even more devastating than the first. The locusts devoured all that remained of the country's crops and livestock. The people of Egypt were forced to eat grass and tree bark to survive. Pharaoh, in desperation, finally agreed to release the people of Israel. Moses and the Israelites left Egypt and headed for the Promised Land. After the Israelites' deliverance from Egypt, Abaddon continued to serve God with loyalty and devotion. However, his loyalty was tested when Satan rebelled against God. Satan, a beautiful and powerful angel, had been the greatest of God's angels. However, he had become arrogant and ambitious and had decided to defy God's authority. Satan's rebellion provoked a war in heaven. Abaddon joined God's forces to fight the rebels. The war was long and bloody. Abaddon fought bravely and fiercely, but was finally defeated by Satan. Satan and his followers were cast out of heaven into hell. Abaddon, however, was forgiven by God. Other versions also say that Abaddon was one of the angels who destroyed the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. These cities were corrupt and sinful, and God decided to destroy them to punish their inhabitants. Abaddon released a rain of fire and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah. The cities were utterly destroyed and their inhabitants perished in the fire. Abaddon had fulfilled another mission from God and helped cleanse the land of evil. However, other stories say that, in time, Abaddon began questioning his role as an angel of destruction. Was it right for an angel of God to cause so much suffering? Was not destruction an evil force? Abaddon began to rebel against God. He refused to obey his orders and began to lead other angels in his rebellion. Abaddon's rebellion failed, and the rebellious angels were cast out of heaven. Abaddon was cast into the abyss, a place of darkness and torment. There, Abaddon became a demon, a creature of pure evil. Abaddon appears as a figure transcending a simple classification in the Jewish and Christian scriptures. He is considered an angel and a place, giving him a rich interpretation. In Revelation, he stands out as the commander of an army of locusts, representing divine judgment. The root of the word Abaddon is believed to come from the Aramaic Abaddon, meaning father. When referring to the Greek Orthodox Church, this is the same nickname that Jesus gave himself when he wanted to make mention of God. It is said to be so because when the Savior looked up to heaven while going through the worst sufferings of Golgotha, the word he repeatedly said was Abaddon. The Bible portrays him as a formidable leader at the head of creatures that combine the features of war horses, human faces, and the teeth of lions. This image places him as a powerful being and an executor of the divine will, a role reinforced by his designation as destroyer in the Latin translation. As for his physical representation, Abaddon is described as a demon with a human face. In some images, he has the form of a man, but in others he has the form of a horse. He has creepy-looking wings and a scorpion tail. In some depictions, he is shown with a crown and scepter, suggesting he is a demon king. 
Although his origin is firmly rooted in Judeo-Christianity, the figure of Abaddon has transcended these boundaries, capturing the attention of scholars and believers from other traditions. In some cases, he has been compared to figures from different religions and mythologies who play similar roles as guardians or destroyers of hidden worlds. Abaddon has been linked to Greek and Egyptian mythology figures, such as Apollo and Anubis. These connections further associate him with themes of death and the world beyond. Starting with Islam, a comparable figure is found in the form of the angel Malik al maut the angel of death. Although different in several respects, his role as a divine being overseeing aspects of life and death is similar to Abaddon's role in Judeo-Christian traditions. On the other hand, in Greek mythology, we find figures such as Hades, the underworld god. However, Hades is not a destroyer in the sense of Abaddon. His reign over the realm of the dead and his association with an aspect of the afterlife present exciting parallels. Both figures, in their way, rule over domains associated with the end of earthly existence. In the Hindu tradition, Yama, the god of death, offers another point of comparison. Yama not only presides over the journey of souls after death, but also plays a role in judging their actions an echo of the role played by Abaddon in some interpretations of Revelation. However, Yama is also presented with a more compassionate side, marking a key distinction from Abaddon. In Norse mythology, Hel, the ruler of the world of the dead, can be seen as a parallel. Although her realm is less about destruction and more a resting place for those who did not die in battle, her rule over a realm of death and darkness shares traits with the Abaddon narrative. Furthermore, in many African and Caribbean cultures, the figure of the boatman or soul guide, often present in rituals and myths related to death and the afterlife, echoes Abaddon's function as a conductor to a realm beyond earthly life. Though not destroyers, these guides are crucial in transitioning between life and death, in Slavic folklore, the figure of Kornobil, a god of darkness and evil, is present. Although more a god of general evil than a being specifically associated with death or destruction, his depiction as a dark and evil force parallels the image of Abaddon as a destroying angel. In Japan, the figure of Enma, the king of the underworld who judges souls, shares characteristics with Abaddon. Although his function is more judicial than destructive, his role in determining the fate of souls after death reflects aspects of the figure of Abaddon in judging and executing the divine will. In Jewish tradition, Abaddon is mentioned as a place of destruction or a realm for the dead, suggesting a broader interpretation of his nature. In the book of Job, he is associated with the incarnation of death, this link highlights his relationship with the end of life and the inevitability of death. In the Psalms, Abaddon is evoked in poetic terms, often parallel with Sheol. The psalmists use these references to express God's omnipresence, suggesting that even in Abaddon, God is present. This interpretation underscores the Jewish belief in divine omnipresence, even in the darkest and most remote corners of existence. On the other hand, Proverbs uses Abaddon in a more moralistic context, as a fate for the wicked or a representation of divine judgment. This facet of Abaddon underscores the Jewish view of divine justice and the ultimate fate of sinners aligning with Judaism's broader view of punishment and reward. Outside of the biblical text in rabbinic literature and Jewish commentaries, Abaddon is often discussed in terms of exegesis and theology. Rabbis and Jewish scholars have explored the concept of Abaddon about the afterlife, divine judgment, and the nature of evil. In the book of Revelation, the figure of Abaddon emerges with an imposing presence presenting himself as the angel of the abyss. Though briefly mentioned, this figure stands out for his power and mystery, capturing attention in the apocalyptic accounts. His role is intriguing and intimidating, placing him at the center of events marking the end of time. 
The most striking scene where Abaddon appears involves a plague of extraordinary locusts. These creatures, described in almost poetic detail, are likened to horses ready for battle. They possess crowns that look like gold, faces reminiscent of humans, long hair, sharp teeth, and protections that resemble iron armor. The sound of their wings is reminiscent of the thunder of chariots and horses in a frantic race, and their tails are like scorpion stingers, ready to inflict pain. This representation of Abaddon at the command of the locusts is rich in symbolism. Locusts, beyond being mere pests, are entities laden with deeper meanings. They represent punishment and divine intervention in a world approaching its conclusion. At the head of this force, Abaddon manifests himself not as a malicious being, but as an agent of destiny, an executor of justice that, although harsh, is part of a more significant order. In apocryphal books, Abaddon is described as a demonic entity, specifically an angel of death. This demon of the abyss punishes anyone who is part of this world by releasing all the creatures of this place. In popular culture, Abaddon is the most feared demon of hell due to his great power. He is depicted as the ultimate leader of the demons of the seventh hierarchy of the abyss. It is also mentioned that Abaddon chained Satan and kept him in chains for a thousand years. Abaddon is also said to be the leader of the Legion of Locusts, the most potent legion of all darkness. It is believed that these locusts could be released along with other demons to face the heavenly angels on Judgment Day also known as the Apocalypse. Abaddon is often depicted as grotesque and fearsome in Christian art, especially in the literature and painting of the Middle Ages and the Renaissance. These depictions sought to convey the horror and magnitude of the final judgment, using Abaddon as a central figure in these apocalyptic scenes. Beyond his role in the Apocalypse, Abaddon has been the subject of numerous theological and literary interpretations. Some Christian scholars have linked him with other biblical figures, such as the fallen angel Satan. However, this association is neither universal nor clearly defined in Scripture. Abaddon has appeared in a wide range of works in literature. He has been transformed from a mythical being to a complex character in novels and short stories. In some stories, he appears trapped in his cosmic destiny. At the same time, in others, he is shown as a formidable antagonist, bringing destruction and despair. Visual art has offered a rich exploration of Abaddon. Paintings from the Middle Ages often show him as a fearsome entity, highlighting his role in destruction. In contrast, he is usually depicted more abstractly in modern art, radiating more contemporary interpretations of his figure. In film and television, Abaddon has been an intriguing character in genres such as fantasy and horror. Adaptations vary from interpretations faithful to the biblical depiction to versions more adapted to current tastes. In music, from classical compositions to heavy metal pieces, Abaddon has inspired works that explore themes of conflict and redemption. These compositions provide an experience demonstrating the complexity of Abaddon's figure, allowing listeners to immerse themselves in his world. Abaddon is often presented as a powerful and challenging character in video games. These games provide direct interaction, allowing players to confront him or even take on his role, offering a new perspective on his character. Regardless of the interpretation adopted, the figure of Abaddon is one of the most powerful and enigmatic in the Bible. It is a figure that has inspired fear and terror throughout the centuries.